situations, when we compare ourselves to other people, then the automatic thing is like, okay, well, they're getting it and I'm not. So what's wrong with me? What do I got to do? When, you know, that may be good for them. And like what they have is great for them, but it may just be only good for you. Like what if, what if that good for somebody else is happening to them and you're waiting because God's got something great for you? There we go. All right, good morning, everybody. Uh, my name is Jasmine Henderson, and this is uh, Jasmine Empowers series. And um, yeah, I'm just excited to be here this morning. Um, I wanted to share with you just this question um, about that I've I've definitely had before, just as far as like, um, you know, what's wrong with me? So. I wanted to talk about that because I feel like um, there's a lot of women, even young women, and, and I definitely was susceptible and, and even to this day still get to remind myself um, not to ask this question <laughs> um, as far as, you know, I feel like sometimes when we're waiting for something, whether we're waiting for a job, uh, a job promotion, or... Um, you know, even in dating, and maybe you're waiting to find somebody, uh, or even, you know, with your parents, and maybe that relationship dynamic, like, sometimes when you're in that period of just waiting, um, we kind of tend to internalize this idea of, well, if I'm not being chosen, then what's wrong with me? So anyways, so I thought that uh, we'd have some fun this morning. Um, Polly is at school right now, for those of you that know my son, uh, single mom in it. But I wanted to share um, just this little excerpt with you guys um, from my book. Anyways, this is a broken vow. And so I wanted to share just of a time where I thought what was wrong with me. And it could be a very dangerous question because um, it can perpetuate a lot of stories. Um, it could cause self-worth and all that awesomeness to just keep going down. So I wanted to share this bit with you and then we'll talk about it a little bit. So thank thank you for those of you that are joining me right now. Um, so in uh, in my book it says, this, this was all a reality that I was facing, but there was one lie that I began to tell myself. As much as I wanted a husband and a family, I began to tell myself I was unworthy of it. Who's going to want me now? I'm a complicated situation. A baby mama, right? Besides, ha hadn't all the movies and, and music warned men about baby mama drama? Whether true or not, I was clearly starting to identify and place myself into this category. How many, of, how many times have you um, started to identify with a specific category because of what society said, right? I admit that that record playing over and over again of unworthiness was already one that had been in rotation for years. And I'll get to that next. But where it picked up momentum was after another movie I saw. On a ladies night, we had all wanted to watch the movie What to Expect When You're Expecting. As kind of a joke since I was pregnant and reading the book, the movie was really funny. But in, in following all the journeys of the different women, one theme was constant. No matter what crazy tangent happened, or fight, or whatever, in the end, the guys were there for the women and their baby. It was something I was not ready to see. Even the movie was saying that the men were supposed to be there, and here I was, alone. What's wrong with me? What was wrong with me? So that was just an excerpt from, from my book, like I said, where... And I, I wanted to share this with you guys because I feel like a lot of times there, like I said, there are movie depictions or, um, you know, even just in a lot of different media in songs and stuff like that, um, where things happen or happy endings happen or all these different things. And when that's not your situation and when you're still waiting, you know, whether you're, like I said, 
you know, on a journey waiting for that perfect mate or for that perfect job or, you know, maybe you're in a lifestyle change and a health change or, um, you know, all these different things are, even as a parent, like, instead of taking that responsibility as far as what am I choosing, like, I think we tend to internalize it and say, well, what's wrong with me? This is happening. That's happening. How come that person got that and I didn't? And for me at that moment, like I said, I, I for so for those of you that don't know, I basically went from like a virgin to a single mom in four months. And when I told my ex about my kiddo, about being pregnant, he wanted to have an abortion. And there I found myself um, pregnant and a single mom. And, you know, a lot of people, even a lot of my friends, they were just like, they really wanted to hurt him <laughs> and they really wanted to, uh, you know, just, uh, how could you do that? How could somebody turn their back or abandon or whatever? And they didn't understand it. And, um, I think there are a lot of times and please chime in if you have experienced that where there's a lot of things in our lives. I think that when they happen, when circumstances happen, um, that we tend to think, okay, like, where did I go wrong? What's wrong with me? So, but what I want to kind of shift this morning in the thinking is not what not what's wrong with you, but what's just not working. I think over the years, as as I've kind of looked back, like what was not working was the fact that I was choosing these guys that I was dating, that I chose Paul's dad and... um the the men that I was choosing versus versus the vision and the life that I wanted, they weren't meshing. So sometimes in your life, like when instead of saying what's wrong with me, like look, take responsibility and say, okay, what's working? And trust me, and that we're gonna get into this is that like you are perfect exactly the way that you are, but we still, but that doesn't mean that we get to ignore you know, the different and take response and not take responsibility for our choices. So I wanted to share that um, because maybe in your life you've felt, um, like I said, just this idea that maybe something was wrong with you. I know, like I said, um, after you shouldn't pick the Viking. <laughs> Thanks, Jan. Oh my goodness. I haven't seen you in forever. Um, but, you know, it's just insane to me to when people you know think that there's something wrong with them and even that pink song you know uh you're you were just perfect you're nothing less than perfect so um even to make the distinction you know i think instead of like what's wrong with me sometimes for instance like if you say like oh like well i was i was dumb like i'm dumb for making that mistake instead you could say you know i'm smart and intuitive but I maybe made a poor decision in that in that instance. So it's like you are not dumb. There is nothing wrong with you. There's nothing even even in um like I said in a job situation or in um you know different relationship situations or even in health situations like I think it's it's detrimental to say like I'm fat. It's like no. I'm not, I I can actually be healthy but I'm making poor decisions. I'm making poor choices. Um, so bringing different things to life to actually choose better in the future. So um, one thing that I want to share with you guys is that you are good, you are perfect, and you're well thought out. And I want to share this, um, this verse. It's in Psalm 139. Some of you guys may know it, 13. For, for you created my inmost being. You knit me together in my mother's room. I praise you because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Your works are wonderful. I know that full well. Oh, the thing is, hold on, Eve. The thing is, that was not the man God has for you. Exactly. And you know what? Thank you, Eve, for saying that because um, fearfully and wonderfully made. Uh, and just thinking about that, you know, this past week, um, I got to be a part of a really big camp. Uh, thank you. 
um, I got to be a really big part of this camp and there's all these were, were I'm, I was coaching soccer and there were, you know, all these coaches and their wives, coaches and their wives and their kids. And, you know, there I was, like, I was a coach, but I was a single mom. Like, I, you know, there was no husband, there was no nothing. Uh, and so it, and it was different. And one thing, one thing came to mind where, and I encourage you for anybody who's out there waiting, you know, that, uh, that idea of, you know, all the good men are taken. But then I thought, like, immediately God put in my mind, well, all the good men are taken because God's got a great one waiting for you. Right? So I encourage you that, like, if you're waiting for something, right? Like I said, whether it's a job promotion, whether it's a specific relationship or, like, a healthy lifestyle that you're, you're still in the midst of changing. Like, when we compare ourselves to others... When we begin to look at the media or, um, you know, look at television shows or uh, listen to songs or we're looking at other situations, when we compare ourselves to other people, then the automatic thing is like, okay, well, they're getting it and I'm not. So what's wrong with me? What do I got to do when, you know, that may be good for them and like what they have is great for them. But it may just be only good for you. Like, what if, what if that good for somebody else is happening to them and you're waiting because God's got something great for you? And so my thing is, why settle for good when you could go and get great? So I just want to encourage you guys, if nothing else, you know, um, like I said, if you're ever asking or if you have a friend that's asking, you know, what's wrong with me? Like, I, I asked that for a long time in the dating game, um, especially because, like I said, a lot of people would say, oh, I, I'd be like, well, I only ever had two boyfriends ever in my life. And, um, you know, a lot of a lot of that, like I said, well, am I not dateable? Am I not this, that, whatever? And I would internalize it instead of saying, you know what? And this is what I encourage you guys to do today in the midst of whatever you're waiting for is saying to yourself, I'm perfectly, I'm wonderfully made, that I'm God's creation, that there is no mistake, I'm not a mistake, that I am perfect and whole. And what... Out of that, what am I going to choose to believe from this moment on? What am I going to choose to make my decisions out of from this moment on? And and thank you, uh, <laughs> Matt, for saying you love my shirt. These are actually my shirts. Um, but it says Lo love overcomes. And so it's this idea that instead of from coming from a place of fear coming from a place of scarcity, of of what's wrong with me, instead of coming from that, coming from this place of absolute love and being overwhelmed and overtaken and completely saturated in love and specifically God's love, that love, perfect love casts out fear. So within that, to love yourself, love the way God made you, there's no one else like you. Like, that's the beautiful part is there's no one else like you. And um, I want to encourage you that if you are, like I said, waiting for something, there is someone or something that is is waiting for what you have, whether it's a specific career or whether it's um, like you know, a certain product that you're offering to somebody or whether it's, it's yourself in the dating game, like, uh, you know, your dreams and your ideas, somebody out there, like you are a yes to someone out there. Like you are a yes already. It's just a matter of, it, it's not going to be for everybody. And that's okay. <laughs> like, it's all right that not everybody is going to say yes to you. Because, like I said, out there, God's got a plan. He's got a door. 
he's got somebody that is has been waiting for what you have like i said whether that's a ministry whether that's um a certain product line or or well, whatever it is okay god god has the perfect yes and you may get to go through a bunch of no's, maybe sprinkle some maybes in, the, in there to get to that beautiful yes. So um, with that, that's that's what I got for you guys this morning. Um, I hope that you were encouraged, like I said, for the next uh, couple weeks while Paul is still in school. I will be here every day at 10 o'clock um, and just looking to empower you, encourage you, um, and to really partner with you. And so... All these, I, I'm loving these comments. Thank you guys. Um, and so thank you guys for your encouragement for me. And I will definitely, definitely receive that. Um, but like I said, just to continue to be encouraged and empowered. Um, you are beautifully, wonderfully made again. That's Psalm 139, 13 and 14. Go back and revisit it. Share this with somebody who maybe needs a little bit of boost. Maybe they've heard a lot of no's. And, um, you know, they get to be reminded that they, they are a yes. So you'll do great. I love it. Um, anyway, so I love you guys. Like I said, I'll be here, uh, tomorrow at 10. I may have a special guest on tomorrow. Um, and then right back again on Monday, we'll, we'll get into it again. Um, if you are interested in my book, like I said, that's what I read from a broken vow. That's my kiddo with his hand. Um, and then obviously these, these t-shirts, there's only like a limited supply, but love overcomes hashtag too beautiful to hide because you are too beautiful to hide. Thank you guys. Have a blessed, blessed day. Let me stop this thing. <laughs> Looking to be empowered some more? Click on the, click on the red button right there. Did you, did you do it? Oh, oh wait, it's cool. Yes? On Team Jasmine? Jasmine Empowers? <laughs>